love of God and understanding the love of God passes knowledge. Well, don't you have to know it to understand it? He's trying to give you some idea of how awesome the love of God is and the more you pursue your relationship with him. And you'll see how that ties to obedience here in a moment. But the point we were making that God does not assume we'll fully trust him until we get to know him and we get to know him by knowing how much he loves us. Amen. And so when you look at God's view versus the world's view in the area of obedience, they're like oil and water. They don't mix because God's plan is always for our good. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number one. I'm going to ask you to do a little flipping today, or if you got your smartphone, whatever way you click through that, praise the Lord. But in Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 19, the word of the Lord says that if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. If you are willing and obedient. What God's plan is telling us clearly from this text, it's always for our good. But as you contrast to that good, the experiences that you may have had in the world, it may have carried some negative baggage with respect to obedience. Uh, pick this up. Don't go there. Do this. And so it becomes rules and regulations, maybe governmental Laws that may have impacted your negative view on obedience. But when it comes to God, when God is asking you to obey, he's doing it for your good because he sees what's before you. He knows the landmines that you might be approaching, the things that may hinder your progress. He already knows what, where you're getting ready to go. And he wants to guide you into a life that's full, an abundant life. But the only way you'll get that is by acting and trusting that he's good. Say amen. That's one of the things that's so challenging for the people of God. And that is to, is to recognize that God is good. And what he wants to do is to help you to see that no matter what is happening in your life, as a child of God, you are uniquely qualified based upon the scriptures that everything in your life as a child of God will ultimately work together for your good because you love him and because you've been called according to his purpose. I know that's difficult at times. Uh, Monday was the time we were supposed to tear off this roof. And I want to brag about it once you all came to church on Sunday. And then the weather broke. And I was praying, Lord, move that storm. Just move it out of the way. Praise the Lord. Wherever you want to move it, move it over the Atlantic Ocean. Move it across the Pacific Ocean. It's big enough to take this storm. Because I want the saints to see this dumpster out there. And I want to see all that roofing to come off to show progress. And I talked to the man. I said, no matter what the condition is, I want to start. I said, well, now, Pastor, you know, we, I know what you want to do, and we want to start. But if it's certain temperature, we can't start. So I hope I don't have to text you, but I might have to text you. So he laid it down, and he gave me the prohibitions and the hesitations. And sure enough, 730, can't do it. It's too cold. Now, you could say, Lord, I prayed, and you let me down. That could be an approach, right? You can take that approach. And, and I'm sure I'm not alone that some of you all may have taken that approach before. You prayed and you prayed and it didn't happen, and now God didn't answer my prayer. That's one perspective. But when you have some track with God, when you've walked with him for a period of time, you know that even the things that you prayed for, some kind of way, I don't know how, and I'm not trying to figure it out. So when the weather broke and it would not cooperate, I said, some kind of way this is going to work together for my good. Praise the Lord. Let me move on. Say amen. 
And, you know, there's another scripture in the book of Romans that says sometimes we don't know what to pray for as we should. So maybe I shouldn't have prayed that prayer. Whatever is going to work together for my ultimate good. Why? Because I love God and I've been called according to his purpose. Amen. And so our experiences can carry a negative view with regard to this issue of obedience. But as I said, God wants to guide us into a life of abundance, and it only comes when we trust and believe that he's good toward us. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of John, because I hope you can see uh, after we read this that there's a pattern here that we need to be sensitive to when it comes to obedience. And the Bible says that the scriptures were written before time because he wants us to learn. He wants us to gain insight from the things that have happened so we can apply it to our own lives.